During this training film, we'll talk about sequences. Now on the Smart Fade, sequences are basically effects and chases. And then there's a special type of sequence we call the stack. We'll talk about that later. The basic effects and sequences live on the last four faders on your Smart Fade. 21 through 24 on the small Smart Fade, or 45 through 48 if you have a larger Smart Fade console. Now sequences are made up of steps and we'll record one quickly right now to give you the idea. There's a record sequence button here and of course we'll be using that. So I'll hit record sequence and you'll first thing you'll notice is a new color has come into play and that is yellow. And sequences are referred to as in yellow throughout the, the their usage in the smart fade. So when I hit record sequence the yellow keys that are flashing at me are places where I can put a sequence, 21 through 24, or as I mentioned earlier, the stack. And we'll deal with 21 through 24 right now. So I'm going to record a sequence here on number 21. Once I select where I'm going to put that sequence, I'm now back in channel mode. And in my LCD, you'll see sequence 21. S stands for step, which doesn't have a number after it. And T stands for time, which is defaulted to one second. The instructions say select bumps. Now basically, I can begin adding channels to a sequence. So I'll record an easy sequence, one, two, three. And you'll see as I'm hitting these, I'm incrementing my step numbers, one, two, and three, four, and five. When I'm done, I'll press record sequence again. So I just recorded a five-step sequence. Now I can access the playback of that sequence by going into memory mode on the faders. Once I go into memory mode, now you'll see in light yellow that this is showing me I have a sequence there. And when I bring this fader up, I guess I'll need to bring up my light output display, you'll see that I am running through the five-step chase that we recorded. Now that's a very simple chase sequence using channels. And I can do the same thing using memories. What I'll do this time is hit record sequence. I'll choose sequence number 22. And since I'm in memory mode already, you'll see it's now offering me the memories that are available blinking in bright red, those being number 1, 2, and 3. So I'll do a simple reverse chase here, 3, 2, 1. And you can see I incremented to step 3. I'll hit record sequence again. And this time when I bring up sequence number 22, you'll see that I'm bringing multiple channels are coming up with each step of the chase. And those are represented by the three memories, number one, two, and three, that are in the three steps of that chase. Well, now that I've recorded this chase, or these two chases, probably one of the first things I'm going to want to do is modify the speed that it plays back at. Let's bring up our channel chase, number 21 again, and you can see that we're chasing through those channels, and we remember that the time recorded was a one-second fade on each step. Now, by using the rate key, I can change the time of this sequence. When I press rate, Things that can have their rate controlled will be blinking at me. And right now you'll see that the stack is blinking. Number 22 and 21 are blinking. Those are the sequence areas that we could deal with right now. So what I'll do is choose number 21 using the bump command, bump key that is. And you'll see that it says 21 rate 100%. And you'll see it cycling through the various steps of the chase. It will tell you what the times are, up and down times of one second, and the channel that's included in each step. So by simply moving the encoder to a higher value, a higher rate value, I can speed up the chase. And now you'll see that it's moving much faster at 187%. And as I slow it down, below 100%, you'll see that it's moving much slower. Now, that's simply a way of visually watching the lighting as it's running and getting it to the speed that you'd like it at. Once you hit the rate key, again, the chase will always play back at the rate you last set it to. Another way to adjust the speed of your sequence is using what we call tap mode. Right now, I'll bring up sequence number 21, our 1 through 5 chase. And I'll use tap mode by holding the rate key down. You'll notice the LCD says tap BPM with bumps. And tapping the flash key below the sequence 
at the speed that I wish for the chase to run. So I'll go with a slow speed. You'll see now that as I flash at a slow speed, the sequence changes to a bump type sequence without a fade really, and it runs at a slow speed. And now if I speed up, you'll notice that it's speeding up. So what this does is takes the several of your taps and averages them out to get a beats per minute value that it applies to the sequence. And this feature allows you to match the speed of a simple chase with music that you may be timing it with. Once you have it running at the proper speed, you can just release the rate key and it will always run at that speed. We remind you of this feature by putting a symbol of a finger, a musical note, and sequence 21 through 24 notation above the rate key. Before we finish sequences, let's take a look at some of the LCD menu options for editing sequences. I'll enter the menu, move to sequences, and hit enter again. And then I choose which sequence I'm working with. I'll choose number 21. And now I have the option of modifying steps. Modifying steps basically allows me to select a step and then uh, insert, delete, or change the content of that step. I can also modify step timing. And in step timing, I can adjust one step at a time, or I can adjust all the steps in the sequence. Last but not least, I can uh, change the run mode of a sequence from to a manual run mode, a looping run mode, which is what it defaults to, or what we call a one-shot run mode, where this sequence will just run one time and then stop. All of those options are available for editing in the LCD menu. But just a couple of more points about sequences. and. One important one is that sequences are pageable, just like memories. So where we have 12 pages of memories, we also have 12 pages of sequences. Each time you change memory pages, you'll get four new sequences on your 21 through 24 faders. And while it seems fairly obvious, it's also worth pointing out that I can play back more than one sequence at the same time as I've done here, which will give me a lot of different options for the way I can make the lighting look using sequences. Now there's more information on sequences available in the SmartFade manual and in our next training video we will talk about a special sequence that we call the stack where you can play back a complete production.